G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I'm going to take you through our whole veggie garden, all 54 raised beds. It's going to be a cracker because the veggie garden is pumping. So let's get into it. Our garden isn't the only thing that's pumping at the moment. There's tractors going, there's people mowing their lawns, there's people cutting down trees and chipping wood. The whole neighbourhood's alight today. So you're gonna hear quite a fair bit of background noise, but well, that doesn't matter because that's acreage living, isn't it? And it's the smell and the sound of people getting out and getting into it. So what we're gonna do is we'll just start from the front here and we'll just work our way all the way back. I'll try to keep you synced into where the location is from my top camera looking down on us and I'll take in a bit closer with the handheld. Now I should say I do have more than 54 raised garden beds. I actually have 60 of them but they're not located here in the main veggie patch so I'm just going to show you these 54 and we can show you those other ones another time because I'm working on them and they're some special projects. Right, let's just start from the front. This is going to take a while, but uh, I'm going to enjoy taking you through all the garden beds and everything about them and all the experiments that I'm doing at the moment. Okay, starting from this bed here, it's a legacy bed. Oh, I don't know why I call it that, but it's a throwover from last season. The pumpkin is still going, but it dies back through winter but we have a perpetual pumpkin growing here. Our pumpkins never die. They just go slower and then they take off again in spring and summer. So we've always got pumpkins and you'll see some of them later on down there. So I'm just leaving this one grow. I might transplant some of it later. In the meantime, you've got some lettuce that's coming up. This is all self-seeded in this bed. It's the right time of year for lettuce and that comes up through the pumpkin vine which is dying back slightly at this time of year allowing these other crops to come and grow between them which is pretty cool. Here we've got spring onions springing into action. This bed here if you've been following my videos is quite an old bed of spring onions. It just keeps on growing, self-seeding and then coming back up again. It's a wonderful bed. I love it and it's a really good way to keep a continuous supply of onions. Here's a couple of those pumpkins that I was talking about. I generally leave them in winter to sit on the garden bed out into the sun and they cure. They cure beautifully in winter time and then I can bring them inside. But they don't have to be straight away picked and taken inside and put in the pantry. They can sit for a couple of months here and just sweeten up lovely in the winter sun. This bed here, I've just let dill self-seed. That's gonna help us out with our cucumbers that will be starting soon. It's just still a bit too cool for cucumbers. We've got some Japanese mustard growing here, self-seeded as well, and some eggplant that were growing through summer and are just starting to rot down. What I tend to do is I let these things rot. It's one or two of the fruits and then seedlings will start coming up and then I'll transplant those seedlings around the garden coming in spring. And you can see here, this is our Everglades tomato. They're really tiny, well, tiny Tim tomatoes, tiny Tom tomatoes. Here they are here. They'll develop more, this whole crop will develop more when spring hits, oh, they are wonderful. Tiny in size, big in flavor. But I like these because I don't stake them. And this is the several season in a row that I've grown them in this raised garden bed here. And you get literally thousands of those tiny tomatoes out of it. And they make the best sauce, they're cutest in salads, they're easy to pick and pretty much grow itself and then just keep coming back season after season. 
In this bed here, I've got a couple of tomato plants growing and a few of these celtus plants, tree lettuce, a couple of these nasturtiums. They just come up everywhere and I'll leave them in place if, I'd, if they're in a good spot and not smothering something else out because the bees love them. We don't eat them that much. This next bit along here is dedicated to some onion crops, garlic chives here. They're also going a bit slow over winter. These are perennial leeks. They don't grow as vigorous as the standard leeks, but they do grow all year round here. And then you've got these Japanese onion or the Racco onions that I've pickled before. They're a really good crop to grow and very hardy and grow all year round, a bit like the spring onions there. In this bed here, I've got rocket that has gone to seed. And I deliberately do that because, you know, you've got the bees that got the native bees here, the little ones that are flying around. They look like little flies. And then you've got the old honey bee here. And now that I keep bees, I'm very aware of letting some, or if not most of my garden go to flower, go to seed and feed the bees. I've always done that anyway. I've always been a pollinator or bee feeder. I like attracting pollinating insects into the garden. And now that I do have our own bees, I'm probably even more aware of it, but not so much so. It's just something I've always loved to do is collect my own seed and regrow it anyway. Um, but if you're helping out nature, why not? In this case, now it's making honey for us. Uh, here we've got a type of ginger. Oh, what is this? I can't remember now. I've been growing this a couple of seasons to try to grow it out and then I'm going to show you guys what it is. Karachi. Chinese keys. A spice, well-drained soil. Yeah, it's been growing quite well here, but I'll let it... It's died back now because it's winter time like most types of ginger plants and turmeric and all that they all die back over winter and then I'll give it another season dig it up and we'll see what it's like and then I've just resting the rest of this bed here this next row of beds I've got these globe artichokes and there was another one that has died back I've got my watering can sitting on it but uh, unfortunately well for this we fixed it up uh, we were able to get rid of the aphids on it and you can still see there's a few ladybirds on here, lady beetles, and they're keeping guard. Hello, what are you doing? Yes, hello, there you come to see me. We'll talk more about her right at the end of this video. There's a bit of a small story to it and we'll save that. Along here, I've planted or transplanted some strawberries. Actually, I transplanted them from this bed over here. I might as well show you. They were starting to get all matted up like strawberry plants can do. And that isn't a bad thing. You can take that as a good thing because what you can do is if your strawberry plants start getting too close together, and get it growing on top of each other well then you simply dig them up and you get twice as many you divide them up and then you can just keep transplanting them out you can give some away if you haven't got the space or you can grow some more like in our case i'm just making more and more garden beds and i put a fig in its place here because i just wanted to try this white adriatic fig that i hadn't grown before and I wanted to see how it goes in a container. And I transplanted the strawberries that I got out of that all in this long raised garden bed. That's, I got more, I got all of those strawberries and more that I planted the residual over there and I'll show you soon. But yeah, they look like they've transplanted well. I only did that yesterday. And they'll be providing us with fruit all the way, probably into summer. This next bed here, as you can see, I've got lettuce and a couple of potato plants from uh, probably last year's crop that I left the odd tuber in the soil and they've, they've come up. So that's by accident, but they look so healthy. You've just got to keep them going. They're not hurting anything. 
So I'll probably get a small crop of potatoes out of these, whatever they are. Some cos lettuce. You can see we've been harvesting them. Harvest, cut, we're not really cut and come again, but they can, they can grow back, but cos is a hearting variety. So that's why I've grown them in threes here. So you can just keep harvesting them as they mature. And along here are mini wombox. They, they look gorgeous. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, healthy wombox with leeks on the side, both sides. I'll come back around the other side and have a look at it. I had an overflow of leeks from this bed here. I grew leeks and I grew them from seed and uh, put the sprinkle the seed around and a million of them came up. So I've been thinning them out. We'll thin them out and we'll eat them. The smaller ones, leave the bigger ones to grow on. Beautiful, I love these thin 30s raised garden beds. I wanted something that would fit in that thin area uh, and it works in there really well. Fitted in there nicely. Like I've already said, I've got leeks here that I grew from seed. And millions of them, look at them. And in the middle here, I'm overwintering a habanero, but you know, it's even still growing all this time, all through winter, and now we're coming to the end of winter. You know, one more month of winter to go just about, and it's still been growing fruit. It's suffering, you can see that, but by gee, by jingoes, by cracky, it's doing really well for a chili. I've got another chili over here that I'll show you as well. It's a... I think it's a Sereno, a, an orange Sereno. Um, don't quote me on that, I can't remember, but I've trimmed this all back. You can see all the trimmings here. I should harvest some of those chilies, but we've got so many of them. But you can see it's suffering too. But what I generally do is I give them a good prune, and I've given this a good prune as well. You give them a good prune, and then come spring, and when the weather starts warming up, give them a boost with, boost with some fertilizer, and then they'll pop and you'll get another season out of them. You usually get about three years, you know, out of a, a chili plant before you just change them. And it's easy as just saving some seed and replanting it. Sometimes when the seed just drops or you prune it back, throw a few extra chilies in the garden bed and then they'll come up in spring, summer, and you'll be able to transplant them wherever you want or keep them in situ. Speaking of growing from seed, all this tree lettuce here, Celtus, is all growing from seed. I transplanted them out of that bed there and on the lawn and places where the last crop of tree lettuce I grew went to seed. It's lovely to harvest young, these shoots, and then when they start to get their big stems, you start then eating the stems as well before they get too big. In here is our remnants of our sugar cane. I've got a really cracker, I reckon, of a sugarcane video coming up. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. You'll be surprised at how many uses I got out of our sugarcane. The old perennial basil here that attracts the bees forever, and it's forever flowering and forever giving you basil leaves for Thai cooking. You know, it's a wonderful plant. And you've seen that many times in my videos. This isn't included in the raised bed. This is a small pot. I don't know if you remember, but the sweet potato took over this whole place and we cut it all back. Actually, Nina did most of the cutting back and cleaning up. Now it's still coming back out of this pot here. I don't know, the tuba must be humongous in there. We've got our half barrels of strawberries all coming to life, all starting to flower and, and fruit. Look at that one. Do I? I just, well, it's a little green, I suppose, but let's try it. Hmm. Mm. You know it's good, don't you? Wow. Oh, look at that one. I'll leave that one for Nina. And here's some more. I love these half barrels for growing strawberries in. They look cute, but they're also very practical. 
and over here is more of an overflow that I made that I put some of the the the, the old well when you when you over summer in this case strawberries they they put out runners or they get crowded like I explained before and you transplant them or even the runners pop over and you plant those runners and you just keep multiplying your strawberry crop and so you really don't need look at the size of this one lovely I've got some beautiful fresh well not fresh but some beautiful well rotted cow manure in this bed here and that is helping to nourish those fruits as they're starting to really come into age right now and uh, I'd say in the next probably month we'll we'll just have strawberries galore here probably make jam but look we just love them fresh so much that we rarely have any left over for jam but yeah very easy and uh, like I said before some of these plants are quite new that I've just planted in here as well I've got my ever growing mint that we've been growing here for a decade if this is the time of year for mint it, it dies back in the summer you can still harvest it but it's kind of woody and not as good but uh, this time of year the mint is just mint that's all I can say oh it's beautiful lovely and plump wow behind me here is a tamarello I'm growing in this pot I'm counting this as a raised bed I wanted to grow the tamarello I've got another one too that's in a container that I need to plant out somewhere in the garden maybe down the back there but because we've got clay soil these don't do well at all they die quickly in the clay I have noticed in the past tamarellos grow better in in the garden beds but I'm going to keep this one short and small so that it doesn't get too big and start shading out other plants so if it continues to grow up which I don't think it, this one will because I think it was already truncated but if it could, continues to grow bigger I might just knock its head off and we'll keep it small and and see how well it fruits speaking of the sugarcane before here I've made a sugarcane teepee with some of my spare stuff a bit like you would use bamboo and at the base here they haven't come up yet but I've planted some beans and those beans are going to come up here and they're going to make a bean teepee and around the base of it I've got this parsley growing it's a curly leaf parsley I do have a couple of other raised beds that's that would be 62 if you counted those two uh, but they're not in the veggie garden technically so there that's where most of the herbs are and I've got a flat leaf parsley over there we've got herbs scattered with, throughout the veggie garden for space reasons because you can't grow all the herbs just there near the house which you'd like to but for practical purposes of course you grow them near the home the one of those principles of permaculture I guess but other practical reasons we grow herbs like your mint and and other parsley and that and verbena and and turmeric and and other spices out in the veggie patch because galangal is another one that we even plant in the orchard because it's such a big plant you know simply for space reasons it just makes sense this bed here has got sweet potato in it it's got a whole bunch of weeds that I need to weed this bed and get rid of it I'll probably dig up the sweet potato before spring and I might change this bed and grow something else in it because I've had sweet potato in it for quite a while so dig up the sweet potato harvest it eat it and yeah grow something else in this bed here is taro the taro has died back and is going slow almost a dormant state because of winter I have dug up some of the taro from other parts of the garden and transplanted it back in here here is some taro that I've harvested it's still the tubers are still hard and still able to be eaten and I'll probably take them into the kitchen later 
but yeah some of the more small taro plants all these once i weed this bed and there's some eggplant here as well and they'll come back they're overwintering but i'll probably clean up this eggplant that eggplant's died i'll probably clean it up weed this bed and then just leave it as a taro growing bed only and once summer hits this taro is going to go crazy i'll give it some fertilizer boost it up this next bed along here is an experimental bed it's growing radish and mostly lettuce lettuce crops look how gorgeous they are they are so healthy and beautiful but this container here it holds water and that water runs into these ollie you know the clay the clay pots the ancient egyptian or ancient middle east i think way of of uh, watering plants where well, they used to use those clay pots and they fill the clay pots they'd have them in the ground and then they'd grow the veggies and the plants around these clay pots and the, the water would seep through it and that's the principle it would slowly seep through and over time water the crops and that's what this system is doing and i'm just testing it out and then i'll bring you a video on it on what i thought of it i would think it's probably even better for smaller containers but i haven't tested in that yet i've just tested the whole system on one raised garden bed here because of the constant water and it's got access all the time it's not getting waterlogged mind you because it's only just sleeping through enough for what the plant needs they are cos lettuces and i showed you the causes before over there they weren't near as big as these ones here these ones here are getting water from the ollie system uh, those are hand watered primarily and so you can actually see the difference moving along we've got these mini cabbages very healthy grows excellent this time of year of course i don't use any pesticides at all on the garden don't need to especially if you grow at the right time of year and you give your plants plenty of nutrients they have their own ways of combating against pests i forgot to mention i've got some rhubarb growing here that'll grow well into spring before it'll get too hot for them in summer but i might transplant them to a, a more shadier spot through summer and see if i can over some of them got two different types of zucchini plants that have grown well through winter you've got that yellow variety here and the standard green oblong one beautiful there's a nice big one through there then i've already done a video on this that's the red spinach or the amaranth here's another leak growing out the side here trying to get more sun and the well baby leaf spinach not baby anymore <laughs> but uh, yeah we're we're getting plenty of spinach out of it i've even freeze dried some of this we can either crumble it up and use it as a drink or you can not powder it up but instead just leave it the way it has been freeze dried and use it in quiches or whatever that freeze dry from harvest right that i've got the links are in the description below not sponsored but i do have an affiliate link with them but i can tell you after the last few years of using it it really is a fantastic device especially for this type of thing around harvest time when you've got a glut and you really want to preserve such a beautiful harvest well then you can preserve it through freeze drying which is one of the best ways to preserve the nutrients and uh, once you rehydrate it 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 pretty much preserves the integrity of it as well especially if you're going to use it in cooking and other things like that or drinks smoothies then i've got my gourd tunnel or my tunnel trellis i count these big long beds as one so there's only two there out of that 54 that i talked about you can see all the nasturtiums they all grew self-seeded and i've left them strategically you know where they've started to grow and even i'm gonna tie this tomato plant up next to these peas but these peas have been feeding off us probably the last there's only 12 plants or so but they've been giving us i reckon five kilo of of peas snow peas oh, wonderful crunchy beautiful in stir fries 
you can freeze dry these as well but oh wow they're just good to eat like that and so I let the nasturtiums go they bring in the bees helps pollinate the flowers I've just let these peas grow up and they'll flop over that tunnel trellis more nasturtiums but in here are other crops but that's not too bad because they're not hurting these other crops might be able to see kale beautiful kale growing through here look at it and the kale will not fight but compete happily with these other plants and uh, they'll grow fine together look at it, it's beautiful isn't it absolutely beautiful Let's go back down this side. All kale here. Mixed in with these flowers. Kale. And then I've got this cauliflower that we just couldn't keep up with it. I probably should be harvesting it and freezing it. We still eat them like this even though the heads are starting to open up. It's fine. We eat them like that. And I'll, I'll pick these and I'll eat them. Might even preserve some of them. But yeah, got cauliflower in there. Now, these self-seeded tomatoes, they're a secondary crop that'll grow up through. Self-seeding, they're growing happy in place. I've just pruned them back a bit and I'm growing them up and they'll grow over, over the, and into the tunnel trellis here. You got the peas again on this side some of these here i'm just letting get big so that i can keep the seed we can either keep the seed to eat them or we can look how big these things are they're like marbles keep them to eat them or keep them to dry and then we can replant them next season Mm. Oh, so sweet. Oh, I'm going to have a good feed coming around the garden here. Mm. Mm. This side, radish, self-seeded again, grew on their own. A mixture of daikon, Japanese radish and other types. A zucchini plant that I transplanted in here. I can pick that one actually and I'll remember to get that later on because I want to have zucchini tonight for dinner. And then mainly tomatoes along the back. I don't know if you remember my video on refurbishing this. This had fallen over, this long raised garden bed or it was starting to fall over. And I put in these posts at the back here to refurbish it and hold it up. It's worked really well. I know it doesn't look fantastic. I'm not in the business of, look, of my garden looking beautiful. Beautiful and looking good, that's subjective for a start. And it's not my main aim. My main aim is productivity, reusing things. Like I have reused here, a lot of these materials are recycled and reused or the materials that can be recycled in the future. Like these posts here, made from recycled plastic in the front of the tomatoes and I'm training these tomatoes up to grow over here I've got celery all the way along and that's about mainly it unless there's a, a self-seeded lettuce or something there's one here that's probably a celtus that's uh, found its way in here but they're all either placed here or self-seeded here, these tomato plants. And I'm just training them up on this jute. On this side, where I've got the radish that you saw down there in those two small ones, these are small herb beds. I like them because, you know, they're like a 
big pot plant but a small raised garden bed. We had a fair bit of limes that we couldn't eat or give away. So I've loaded them up. These beds have sunk over time. And what I've done is I've loaded them up with some of this waste fruit rather than just putting it into the compost. I've loaded it up and to three quarters full, there's some soil under here, probably halfway, soil where it's just sunk right down. Now I'll put dirt on top of this or soil and what'll happen is that'll all decay underneath it. It'll all sink down again, but you'll have this rich, beautiful uh, compost type fertilizer soil that will help sustain the plants that are on top. You get rid of the waste, you recycle the waste, you feed the worms and the microbes and the animals in your garden. You also feed the plants that you put back in there and everything is cyclic and recyclable. Look at this reedy stuff here. That there is a water chestnut. Now I'll be bringing you this experiment of growing water chestnuts. That's on the, on the way, it's in the pipeline. And I think it's gonna be a, a really good video. But that's died back now as it does die back in winter. And it's time to harvest them before they start reshooting. And no, that's not a reshoot, that's probably still part of the dying back process. But yeah. Anyway, I'll bring you that. In here I had an elephant yam. That elephant yam has died back now. And I've got a pumpkin vine growing over the top of it, a few chili plants. I will probably give the elephant yam another year in there because it was pretty young. And then I'll start digging it up and having a sample of it and doing a video on it and checking it out. But in the meantime, I just wanted to grow it a couple of years in a row and, and get it populating this bed. The other round raised garden beds here, some of them have got tomatoes in it all the way over there. But mostly they're bare. One had ginger in it. This one had nothing in it. I've got to fill them up again. They've sunk. This one here. Oh, you've got pumpkin vine everywhere out the back here, growing wild. But yeah, it had ginger in it. I'll probably dig this ginger up. The ginger is a small variety of ginger. Oh, so it smells nice. But what I, I like the bigger tube of gingers. This can be finicky, too finicky to, to play with so, and to cook with. So I think I'll grow ginger, a bigger variety. Um, and maybe just juice this up, I think. Probably the best way to do it. Juice it up, keep the ginger juice for cooking and, and drinks. The oldest beds here, these were, I purchased these birdies beds in 2008. That one's bare at the moment. I'm not sure what I'm gonna put in here just yet. This one has still got my sweet potato in it. It's like a perpetual sweet potato bed. And I see no reason to change it just yet because the sweet potato is still growing great. Sweet potato slows down through winter, if not stops completely and dies back. But you can see it's still growing very well. And this will become pumping again once the summer rains hit and uh, the heat starts coming back. This bed here it looks like it's full of weeds, but it's actually dead asparagus. And now is the time of year when I get rid of the weeds and I cut all the asparagus back, remulch it, refertilize, ready for that asparagus to rest and then come back into spring. These two beds here have been here for a while, blueberries. And then I've planted this dwarf coconut. And I'm keen to see how that works out. Early days yet, that's why I haven't talked much about it. The blueberries need topping up. You see the bed has sunk and that's why in this one I built the bed up as far as I could and I actually compressed the soil down halfway as much as I could as well. I have put this wire around it or this mesh because the bush turkeys were raking it off. They had some type of issue with the coconut palm and they were trying to dig it all up. It's got some nasturtions there and I put tomato growing out of it. I've got so many, I leave so many plants go to seed 
that you have these volunteers popping up all over the garden continuously. So I have all these free plants on the go always. I can either discard them and put them in the compost, leave them grow where they are, or dig them up and transplant them somewhere else in the garden. And most of these, or well, all of these now, is that new area where I got rid of the banana, the big tall banana trees, only kept the dwarf. And we've created all these new raised beds in this area that used to be pretty much wasted. I did forget to mention this cherry that I put in this first raised garden bed, well, one of the, fir the, the first new one out of this mob here. And uh, yeah, it's a mini royale. It's supposed to fruit in the subtropical climate. It's supposed to be a, a low chill, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Looking at maybe planting some potatoes in here to have a end of winter and into spring before summer crop of potatoes. These are a raw blue. We've got a King Edward. I might plant them in these two beds here, not sure yet. And you can also see I'm putting down some gravel here, some drainage. This is a 40 mil drainage, fairly big stones. It spreads easily. Well, it's actually um, pretty heavy to spread. But what I like about it is like a spadeful or a shovelful can do a lot of area. All this here was from 700 kilograms, three quarters of a ton, just under. You can see how much I've got out of that. The banana trees sucked up all that extra water because it's down the bottom of the hill here. It gets closer to the water table and this can get really mushy, especially through wet weather. I've got more rocks to put down here. I'm gonna grass over the top of it and that should be fantastic. In these other beds here, I haven't made up my mind yet what I'm gonna grow. Um, possibly some final salad crops for the end of the year. Um, maybe some summer crops. I might put some rosella in there. Uh, who knows? Um, there, there, there's plenty of space. So I don't know, maybe some ginger and turmeric. Uh, chilies, peppers, capsicum, I'm not sure yet, but I'll have fun trying to work it out. Bella, Bella, hello. Oh, hello, yes, 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 yeah. Well, this is Bella, say hello. Too soon, do you think? You know we lost Scooter. And I'll, I'll put it down. Oh, uh, yeah, we, we lost Scooter. Thanks for all the well wishes and condolences. I did that uh, memorial type tribute video to Scooter. He was a fantastic dog. And uh, we miss him terribly. But uh, two days after losing Scooter, um, this is the story. We, we were thinking maybe we won't get a dog for a couple of years. We were sort of were mourning, and still am, to an extent, mourning Scooter. And then we get a phone call from the in-laws. And uh, Doug, my father-in-law, um, God bless him, uh, lovely guy, and Sandra, lovely, lovely lady, um, they got Bella. They've moved up here to Queensland. They were living in Barrel. And they, they got this puppy, a, a new sort of life, a new chapter in their life, coming up here closer to family here and, and their, their daughter. Um, but unfortunately, uh, look, looking after a puppy at their age proved really difficult. And it was a very difficult decision for them to give Bella up. But what happened was, Nina's mother rang up and said, look, Doug's had a fall. There's the dog's always at his feet. And, you know, being in the 80s, when you're falling over, that can be really bad. So um, she was devastated and she was saying, oh, we have to give Bella away. Um, I've tried ringing up the lady who we bought Bella from and she won't take her back. So what do I do? Um, is, have you got any ideas on on how we can sell her off or give her away. And Nina basically straight away came to me and I said, look, there's a vacancy. 
you know. Um, we, this, Nina actually picked up Bella for the in-laws and, you know, for her mother and picked her up. And so Bella already had like a first contact with Nina and, and they grew an instant attachment. And then Nina gave them the dog, of course, and Bella was going not well there for, for a good month. They tried their best. And in the end, you know, we said, we'll take her. Um, even though it is, does seem a bit soon, uh, in, in retrospect, it's, it's not too soon. Scooter is a beautiful dog and he'll always be remembered as that. Uh, Bella's a different dog. She's got a beautiful nature. She's a wonderful puppy. She's already playing fetch. She loves being outdoors and in the garden. She's a real tomboy. So she's fitting in very well. We just could not give her away to someone else. Um, and that's the way it is. Here she comes now. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes. Yes. All that energy of a puppy. It's like having another child. Good girl. Good girl. Yes. So that's the story of Bella. And that's the wrap up of the garden walk around the veggie patch tour of the 54 raised garden beds. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give me a big Bella Hella beautiful thumbs up and uh, share the video around. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Bye for now. Cheers. What are you sniffing for? What are you looking for? Where's, the, where's your ball? Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Where's the ball?